Yo, what's going on everyone? This is B Diz the Rockstar, a part of Super Obvious, and in this video we're gonna talk about Raw. The airing date is September 3rd, 2018. I'm not gonna go over the whole show, but I'm gonna go over some things that I think are very important. Let's go. Alright, so as soon as Raw starts, the first thing that we see is the commentary table with Michael Cole and Corey Graves and Renee Young is back. She is back on commentary. I think we saw her a couple weeks ago. I believe it was uh, SummerSlam weekend, like that Monday before SummerSlam, I think. Yeah, so Renee Young is back because Jonathan Coachman is busy again. He's too busy to be a commentator on Raw. Wow. So, we're going to talk about Renee Young. That's actually going to be one of the main focuses of this video. Last time she was on Raw, she, um... You kind of forgot she was there, you know what I'm saying? Like, she didn't really voice up a whole lot. And then also, like, the dialogue that they gave her to say wasn't really good. She wasn't able to really shine and stand out like I thought or hoped she would. Um, that's how it was last time we seen her. I'm going to talk about how Renee Young was on commentary later on in this video. Now, going into the actual show of Raw, one of the first things I want to talk about is the promo that... Shawn Michaels does. HBK, he comes back, he gets a huge pop from the fans, and he's basically going to be talking about the match with The Undertaker against Triple H at this show that I kind of feel like happened in the middle of nowhere, but it's cool. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, he cuts a promo about Triple H and Undertaker, basically saying how Triple H is getting old and Undertaker is getting old, but he thinks that Triple H will win because he has, quote unquote, more gas in the tank. Now, his promo is a little bit, not too long. It gets interrupted when The Undertaker comes out, and The Undertaker is still... He's pretty intimidating, he's kind of scary. Let's just, let's just keep it keep it real, okay? So, Undertaker pretty much tells HBK that, like, hey, you know, when I go against Triple H, I'm going to lay him down again. It's a pop for the fans. It's a really good promo. I mean, once again, this whole match came out of nowhere, but it's probably going to be really, really good. The next thing we're going to talk about is the tag team match with the Bella Twins. First off, their intro is way too long. Oh my god. And actually, I don't really have a whole lot about this. All I know is that Brie Bella did a suicide dive towards the peak of the match and botched it. She does a suicide dive jumping out of the ring and she falls short, like very short where Ruby Riot and I believe it was Sarah Logan have to almost like go in to try to catch her so she doesn't splat on the ground and die. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's all I got. There is also a segment backstage where the Revival are getting interviewed and get jumped by Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, the Revival gets the shit beat out of them by Dolph and Drew McIntyre. That happens too. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Raw Tag Team Championship match, which is the B-Team, who are the champions, and they go against Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. For the most part, this match was not very long. It pretty much picks up where Drew McIntyre throws Curtis Axel into the corner and then delivers a belly-to-belly -belly, like overhead throw suplex, which looks like Wow, like that sucks for Curtis Axel's back. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler comes in the ring and he super kicks Curtis Axel. Like it's a really, really good super kick. Like Dolph Ziggler has one of the best super kicks like in WWE for sure. So right after the super kick, Dolph makes the tag and Drew McIntyre and Dolph do their Claymore kick slash zigzag combo finisher move that they do and they win the Raw Tag Team Championships on Raw. It's really crazy, man. Like, I really like how the titles are being defended more. I like how titles are changing hands, like, on weekly shows. Like, it's kind of a big deal if you're a wrestling fan. I like it a lot. Next, we have a promo with Elias. Elias is always fantastic on the mic. I love the guy. We have a promo. He's in the ring. He does some of his singing. He's getting cheered. And eventually, he starts dissing where he is he was like uh what did he say he was like if columbus knew what this place was he would have turned his ship around and left <laughs> alexa bliss comes out and uh at first she seems kind of face basically saying like this is where she went to school and she loves this place 
she gets a bunch of cheers, you know, the crowd pops for her, and then she just flips it around and disses the hell out of where she is. It's so great. <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about is the match with Finn Balor against Braun Strowman. There is a spot where Braun Strowman is outside of the ring, kind of hunched over, and Finn Balor jumps off the apron and does a double foot stomp to the back of Braun Strowman's head, and you hear it. It sounds like, it sounds like that, but like, the sound it makes when two feet like stomp you in the back of the head. And there's also a part where there's a botch where Finn Balor is sitting on the top turnbuckle and he's supposed to be wrapping his legs around Braun Strowman to do a cross armbar triangle chokehold. They completely botch it. Finn Balor spins, falls on his back. Braun Strowman is on him and it looks like the hold is not being used right at all. You can even probably see the fans like, oh my god, this looks bad. So eventually, uh, there's a part when that goes on and Braun Strowman just deadlift picks up Finn Balor and slams him on his back. I think he probably just freestyled that just to kind of make up for it. After that he picks Finn Balor back up and does his trademark power slam winning the match. Alright so after that match there is a part where Drew McIntyre and Dolph are in the ring with Braun Strowman and Braun Strowman pretty much picks up Finn Balor and slams him again. And what's actually pretty funny is, when he gets slammed, you see Dolph Ziggler, he's like, Yeah! <laughs> Shit is so cool. So, I guess the main thing we're going to talk about is, um, towards the beginning of the episode, which I didn't go over earlier, Baron Corbin had the S.H.I.E.L.D. arrested. Like, they were, like, arrested, put in a van, and the van drove off, and they were getting booked, and, like, they get updates, we get we get updates like throughout the episode that you know they're locked up or they got out, they've been released. So at the very end of the episode, after everything I just told you, the shield music goes on, huge pop from the fans. There's like a a patrol van that backs to where like the entrance ramp is. And Roman Reigns comes out, he gets booed, he opens the back of the van and then Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose is there, the crowd pops. This is probably one of the biggest beatdowns we've seen in a long ass time. Like, the whole locker room comes out. You see Authors of Pain. I don't know if you know those guys. They're huge. It has Drew Gulak, which is from 205. It has, uh, I think Titus is there. Basically, it gets to a point where it's like, there's three S.H.I.E.L.D. members, and they're all getting beat up by like seven or eight people at the same time. There's a spot where Roman Reigns gets hit in the face with the stairs by Braun Strowman twice. And there's also a spot where Seth Rollins is on the entrance ramp and he gets thrown off the entrance ramp and his body crashes into the van. As soon as Seth Rollins hits the ground, you see blood splatter everywhere. And you know it's bad because they show Roman Reigns getting beat up, they show Dean Ambrose getting beat up, they don't show Seth Rollins for like another like a whole minute or two. And eventually ends with all three SHIELD members laid out on the outside of the ring, on the ground, with everybody else surrounding them, almost like the shield's been defeated. Like, it was such a big beatdown, and it's, like, it lasted several minutes, like, a long-ass time, almost to where it's like, you don't want to watch it anymore, because it's kind of uncomfortable. The last thing I want to talk about, which is almost the main focus of this video, is Renee Young being back on commentary. Now, what I feel like is going on is, I don't think she's getting good dialogue, to be scripting as she's being a commentator. If you know Renee Young, she's really good with interviewing people backstage. She has previously done commentary on shows before, like I said in my previous Renee Young video. I just feel like, in her defense, it's really hard for her because she's probably a little bit like shy or like nervous because if she's doing commentary with Michael Cole, whether you like Michael Cole or not, he is a veteran. Michael Cole has been doing commentary for a long ass time like he really knows his shit and then also with Renee Young doing commentary with Corey Graves which in in his defense he is being pretty gentle with Renee Young normally if you know Corey Graves he is a savage like he holds no punches he's super brutal he'll talk shit about everyone like he'll stab you in the gut with his words man for real so I feel like Renee Young coming up and trying to do commentary with Michael Cole and Corey Graves it's really hard for her, but I almost feel like she has an advantage because, in my opinion, she's way better than Byron Saxton, and she's way better than Jonathan Coachman, and she's a girl. You know what I'm saying? So that's cool. 
I just think that they need to give her better dialogue. She needs to speak up more because when she did commentary last time and in even this episode of Raw, it gets to a point where you kind of almost forget that she's there because she's not talking enough. I like Renee Young. I'm confident in her. I know she can do it. She just has to speak up more, you know, voice her opinion. Renee Young is a lot of fun. She's very charismatic. She's like a good backstage interviewer, a journalist. Like, she really knows her stuff. I just feel like they need to push her the right way because I know she can do it. I know she can be a great commentator on Raw. I know she can. But yeah, anyway, this is a quick video about Raw. I didn't go over everything. I just wanted to touch a few points of the show. But yeah, please like the video, please subscribe to my channel, please comment below and let me know what you think about Raw, what you think about the new uh, Raw Tag Team Champions, what you think about the Shield getting destroyed, what you think about Renee Young on commentary. Hit me back. Once again, please like, please comment, please subscribe. There's more content on the way, for sure.